This year's European elections. It's a big deal, but it's not simple. To help you get your head around them, we've put together this handy explainer. Confusingly, different parts of the EU use different voting systems, but all are some form of proportional representation. Some vote for parties who have selected a fixed list of candidates to appear on the ballot paper. Other countries have more open lists where voters choose a party or indicate who is their favourite candidate. Here, electors choose as many candidates as they like and number them by preference. Turnout at EU elections has dropped from 62% to 42% over the last four decades. That's despite a handful of countries, including Belgium, Greece and Bulgaria, where voting is compulsory. MEPs are elected to represent geographical areas, regions in some countries, like Italy, while in others, such as Germany, they have the whole country as their constituency. The number each country gets is proportional to its population. Germany, the most populous, will get 96 MEPs for its 82.8 million people, while tiny Malta, with 475,000 people, has just six. They will serve a five-year term, 2019 to 2024, and spend their time between European parliaments in Strasbourg and Brussels. They pass EU laws and approve its budget, along with the European Council. MEPs, while representing countries or regions, sit in transnational groups in the parliament, according to political ideology. For example, there are groupings to represent the centre-right, socialists, greens, and others for Eurosceptics. MEPs also help choose the President of the European Commission. The largest political grouping after May's election has the strongest mandate to have its choice head up the Commission. The European Council, comprising chiefs of EU countries, first votes on a nominee chosen after taking into account the election result. If they approve the candidate, it goes to the European Parliament, where he or she must get the support of a majority of MEPs.